Hello. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to talk today about uh, AMP for email. So a couple of months ago, um, Gmail announced that they're going to be supporting AMP in email some point later this year. They haven't given us a release date yet. Uh, so I've been doing a bit of testing around that, so I'm just going to share with you some of my notes I've been making. Uh, I'm Mark Robbins. I work for Rebel. Um, there's a t-shirt. Um, we do a lot of interactive email stuff, so all this AMP business is quite interesting to us. Um, so yeah, come and, any questions, come and grab me afterwards. Um, also, I'm on Twitter, m underscore j underscore Robbins, or at go rebel mail, ask on there, and I'll get back to you. Uh, so first up, um, oh, see me. Oh, one, there we go. What is AMP? Um, so that's the definition from the ampproject.org website. Um, they say it's an open source initiative aiming to make the web better for all. It's not very descriptive. Um, I had a go at it as well. It's still not very descriptive, but um, accelerated mobile pages. Uh, it's a framework optimized for speed and performance. Um, so this started off, in the, as the name suggests, accelerated mobile pages for mobile web. And um, it's sort of grown from there, and then people use it on desktop web, if that's a thing. Uh, and now it's coming into email. <coughs> Um, it's, yeah, it's open source, uh, as it says there. Um, however, it is sort of owned and run and operated by Google. So there is a little bit of criticism around that about how open source can something be if it's run by Google. Um, but uh, with it being open source, then you can actually see everything. You can see what's going on. It's you know, very open. Also, um, they're encouraging other email clients to support AMP as well. And so they'll have working with the same spec. Um, so how do we send uh, AMP? Um, first up, you're going to need to get whitelisted. This isn't confirmed yet, but it's strong suspicion that you're going to need to get whitelisted by Gmail uh, to be able to send these emails. Um, in the same way that Gmail actions work, that you need to get whitelisted. So they can monitor it, they can control it, they can police it. Um, then you've got to uh, build this extra MIME type, uh, which is AMP, X AMP HTML. So currently you're probably sending emails with plain text and HTML. If you're feeling fancy, you might be putting a, like an Apple Watch MIME type in there as well. And now we've got this extra AMP email, um, which is sort of, in terms of actually the, what's being sent, it's not that complicated because it's just an extra, you define the, uh, the plain text, put the content, define the HTML, put the content, find the AMP mine type, put the content. Um, but in terms of doing, building that into an ESP, it's a little bit more complicated because you've got to do documentation around it, build like a user interface for it and stuff. So I don't know how many ESPs are going to be building it, that out just yet. I don't know about email octopus, if you guys are looking into that yet or not. But um, I'd expect to see more of the API-based sort of back-end focused ESPs to be doing it first. Um, and then uh, supported ESP is needed. So how is the code different? Um, it's not HTML, it's a framework. So if anybody here uses something like MJML, um, you're used to sort of writing the code. It looks like HTML, but you've got all these elements that aren't HTML. Then you run it through this uh, script that will export it as H HTML. It's the same sort of concept as that. Um, except you send it before exporting it to HTML, you send it and then Gmail will run the script to export it. Uh, so you can't just copy and paste your HTML, um, which would be nice. You could you just want to put a little AMP component in amongst the rest of your code. Um, it doesn't quite work like that. You do need to build this from scratch, unfortunately. Um, but there are benefits to that as well. And it does have very strict validation. So with the validation, um, again, they haven't confirmed this yet, but we suspect that when uh, the validation fails, um, it's not going to show a broken email. It'll probably just fall back to your HTML or plain text version. Um, so yeah, getting started with it, this is, all this code here is required um, for the validation to pass. Um, if you're sending HTML, you actually don't really need anything. You can just put hello world and it will validate. Um, but for AMP, you've got, so first of all, you've got your doc type, your HTML5 doc type, which probably most people are using already. Um, then the AMP, the, sorry, HTML elements with AMP for email attribute in it. 
You can also write that out as AMP. You don't have to use the little lightning bolt. It just looks cool. Um, but you can actually write AMP, number four, email. Um, then we've got this, at line six, we've got this script tag. That's for the actual AMP um, script to work, the AMP uh, JavaScript to come in. That's required to sort of build the AMP template. Um, if you're putting other components in, which is sort of how AMP all works, I'll get onto all the components and stuff in a bit, uh, then you need to put a script in for each of the components that you're using to reference which ones. So uh, AMP carousel, AMP bind, AMP list, I'm going to talk about those later. You'll just put those script tags in as well if you're using them. If you put the content in without the script tag, it fails the validation. If you put the script tag in without the content, it fails the validation. Um, then next up, we've got two style blocks. The first one is this AMP for email boilerplate. Um, that just goes in like as is. Uh, body visibility hidden looks a bit weird, but it's OK. Um, that also is very strict in the validation. You can't put any spaces in that. So if you're using some kind of build system that will sort of pretty up your code and add, put new lines in and space things out, that will fail the validation. So it has to be exactly like that. And then you've got the AMP custom the style, which is just your CSS, and then your content in the body as normal. Uh, so a few basic rules. No inline styles. So if we're used to building emails, lots of inline styling, you can't do that with AMP. Um, it's something they might be changing, hopefully. I'm not sure. Um, it does restrict things a little bit, but it's, generally it's not too bad. Um, only one AMP uh, custom style block. So if you're used to coding for Gmail, you might be using multiple style blocks to account for. They've got like a 16,000 character uh, limit on the styles. Uh, anything over that will get cropped. So the way around it um, is we'll put in multiple style blocks. With AMP, you can't do that. Uh, but AMP has got 50,000 characters of CSS. Um, so that's, it's plenty. Um, although because you don't have the inline styles, uh, you do have more going on in the CSS. But it's still, I've, I've not hit that limit yet, just playing around with things. Uh, I think this will trip people up a lot. You can't use an image tag. Um, so this is one of the things of copying and pasting your code. You can't use an image tag. Um, instead, you have to use this AMP image. Uh, and also on that, it's required to have a height and width defined. So um, the reason they're doing that is because images aren't very good in the way they, they're handled in HTML. Um, with, with a defined height and width, you're always going to load that block. So even if the image takes a while to load, it's already defined that space on the page. So it doesn't have to repaint when that loads. Um, also, if you, put, if you have an image and you hide it, you put display, display none on it or something like that, uh, so you have a mobile and desktop versions, no matter what you do, that will always download that image uh, when you open an email. With AMP, they can stop that. Um, so yeah, CSS support for it. It's same as regular Gmail, mostly. Uh, I was hoping for a bit more support, but it's pretty much the same as regular Gmail. But you've got a couple of extra things. Uh, we've got check selector. Uh, that's come back, which is nice. Also hover, which I know uh, Gmail doesn't use currently. Um, attribute selectors, which are quite useful for um, just reducing the amount of CSS you write, firstly, but also for the um, the generated code which AMP produces, uh, which I'll get onto in a bit, uh, the attribute selectors are quite useful for targeting that. Negative margins, nice for layout. Gmail doesn't like them at the moment, but you can use them in the AMP Gmail. And there's no media query restriction. So Gmail um, have brought in media queries, which was nice to them. Um, but the, there are restrictions on them. You can only use certain ones. With this, you can put stuff in. It's not that useful, but you can split off like your WebKit, Moz, MS, so you can sort of do a little bit of brow uh, device detection and browser detection through those, uh, which does sort of give you a couple of options. Uh, and then there's component-generated CSS. So when you, you insert these components into the framework, and when Gmail renders it, it will render it out as HTML and CSS. And in that CSS, they will have things like position, which isn't supported uh, if you were to put that in the style block, but it is if you put it as it's generated automatically. Uh, so you don't have much control over that, but it does give these extra functions within uh, the components that are generated. 
So that takes me on to the components. Um, there's a number of pre-built AMP components, um, such as AMP Carousel, also sort of, which is basically an uh, image gallery. I'm a bit annoyed they called it gar Carousel rather than gallery because there's sort of negative connotations of Carousel uh, with like, should I use a carousel.com? Which uh, is annoying. Um, but galleries, image galleries, every e-commerce site, every, anything probably trying to sell something, you put images in a gallery, that's normal. Carousels are bad. Um, so then you can do custom interactions with AMP binds. So you could rebuild the carousel with AMP binds completely. Um, it works sort of a similar, similar way. It's basically sort of uh, JavaScript click, event, click events. You can uh, do sort of like add a class, change a class, um, adding or changing uh, attributes on elements. And from there you can do a lot of, lot of different things. And form submits, so you can uh, submit forms through AMP. You can submit forms through regular Gmail, um, but it does come up with a little warning and says uh, if you, you know, you're going to submit this to a different website, which is fair enough. Uh, with AMP, that doesn't come up because you're not, you don't have a redirect on the endpoint. You can only submit the form within the email client, um, which is a little bit annoying because if you want to do like a search, you're not going to redirect, you type in your search term, you, you hit submit, and it doesn't take you to the search result, results page on your website. Instead, it keeps you within the email, uh, but in there you can uh, put your custom content, and you can put, using this AMP list, you can pull in dynamic content, so you can pull your search results directly into the inbox, uh, which is cool. And this dynamic content, it's different to like how you'd use like dynamic images or dynamic CSS in emails currently. Um, there's a lot of limitations with dynamic images. They're great and you can do loads of cool stuff with them, but you've only ever got one alt attribute. So there's accessibility issues there. With dynamic CSS, you can do, you know, you can pull in more custom content. Um, you can get a bit more accessibility going on, but you're limited to what elements you already have in the HTML. With this, you can just pull in as much or as little as is required. So it's, um, it's pretty cool. Uh, also, countdown timer, you can do with AMP time ago, um, which is a simple little component, and it just exports as text, and it will tell you, um, if you put in a date and a time, it will say, this offer ends on 22nd of May. And then when you get closer to it, it will say, this offer ends in one day, this offer ends in one hour, this offer ends one hour ago, and so on. Um, it's a little bit limited with the, the content it has currently. Uh, I'm hoping they're gonna sort of add to that at some point so it gives you a bit more customization of it. Um, but it's cool, again, it's, it's text, it's live text, so it's accessible, it's stylable, and, and so on. Uh, so I built, yeah, built a couple of little uh, examples here. On the left is a HTML image gallery, and on the right is an AMP one. Um, they function pretty similar, they look pretty similar. I could have spent a little bit more time on like fixing a couple more things to make them identical. Um, but yeah, that, it's just sort of to show how it works. On the left, that's in Apple Mail, and on the right, this is in the AMP Playground. So if you go um, online, there's uh, AMP for email playground, so you can just write up your AMP code, put it in there, and it'll render as this. This is where sort of most of my testing's been done for this talk. Um, but yeah, the file size is what what's quite interesting here is the HTML is 17 kilobytes, the AMP version is nine kilobytes. So it's almost half the size, but that HTML is without a fallback for the gallery. So if you put a fallback in, they'll take it um, over 18 probably. So then that will be half the size. Um, but that's sort of both of them full emails. So just gonna wrap up with a few pros and cons. Um, Pros of AMP, it's well documented. There's a big community around it, it's all open source. You can actually sort of dive right into the code and work out how it all works. Um, it's easy to test. There's the AMP uh, playground, which I just showed. Um, also, there's lots of uh, open source validators. You can just plug that straight into your build system if you're using one of those, or you can copy and paste your code onto the, the playground, and that will validate stuff as well. Uh, also, you're only doing this for for Gmail, this is only one email client you're testing in. Uh, so that makes things a bit easier. Um, 
although they have opened, you know, they are encouraging other email clients to pick it up, so who knows in the future. No fallbacks needed, because again, you're only targeting this one email client currently. Uh, it's accessible by default. Stay. It's accessible uh, by default. A lot of the components are built with accessibility in mind, which is good. Uh, there are some things you do need to still do yourself. It's not foolproof. Um, and there's lots of cool functionality which is new to Gmail. Um, a lot of these things we can do with other email clients, but it's all new in Gmail. Uh, the cons is a new language to learn. So, yeah, you've got to learn how to write AMP, how to deal with AMP. Um, it's not that complicated, but it is an extra thing to, to pick up. Um, and I said you don't need a fallback, you do still need a fallback uh, because you need a um, HTML version for every other email client. You can't just have an AMP version and send that out because it's not going to work. You need to support the other email clients. It requires support from your ESP and other tools, so you can't necessarily start using it today. Also, I haven't got on here, this, you're probably going to need to be whitelisted, um, so you need to go through that process as well. And time. Time is the big issue, which is going to catch up with all of us. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot. I am um, Mark Robbins. Uh, give me a shout, questions and stuff later on, and I'll be around for there. Cheers.